dark days in Alberta, but there is one bright light. Our friends at the Canadian Taxpayers Federation were joined now from Calgary from the Alberta boss of the taxpayers, Paige McPherson. Paige, good to see you again. Thanks so much for having me. Well, it's our pleasure. You bring a warning of bad news. Alberta, which once had the best credit rating in Canada, eliminating the debt, is now being put on a credit watch by the bond rating agencies. Tell me a little bit more about this. Yeah, that's right. So, I mean, I'm bringing this warning, but really more importantly, Moody's Investor Service is bringing this warning. That's one of the credit rating agencies that assesses uh, the province's financial situations to determine what their uh, credit rating rate will be. So now what we've learned is that Alberta is officially on watch. Moody's Investor Service has basically made clear that Alberta's ballooning debt means that it could impact our AAA credit rating. The reason that that's important is just like, you know, when you're trying to apply for a new credit card, uh, your own credit matters for the rate that you pay. So the worse our credit is, the more we pay uh, in interest payments to finance the province's debt. So that's really bad news for Alberta taxpayers. It's bad news because, of course, if the credit gets a downgrade, Alberta will have to pay more in interest for the debt it needs. But it's also a symbolic statement. I mean, Moody's is not running for public office. Moody's is not on the ballot. So if the Wild Rose opposition or the PC opposition were to say, things are out of control. People might say, well, you've got a vested interest in saying so, but Moody's doesn't care. They're just designed to give impartial expert advice to, to lenders. So it really carries a lot more objective credibility when some bond raider in New York says, yikes, Alberta's going off the rails. Am I right? Oh, that's exactly right. We really have to heed the warnings of these credit rating agencies and we need to really listen to what they say because what they say is important. And I think that there's a, a other examples across Canada that sort of highlight this. If we look at Ontario, for example, where, you know, the interest payments on their debt, I think just this year, uh, it's $11.4 billion in, in debt uh, interest payments alone. That is like massive. And, and because of this, I mean, Ontario really hasn't listened to the credit rating agencies. They've the credit rating agencies have been warning Ontario for years, I think since 2009, saying, look, your credit is, is getting pretty bad. If you continue to borrow at these rates, then we're going to have to downgrade your credit rating and it's going to be more expensive. The, the reason why that matters is because now Ontario taxpayers are paying so much interest on their debt financing alone. We don't want that to happen here in Alberta where, you know, 10 years ago, we were declared uh, debt free by our Premier Ralph Klein at that time. We have a really good track record here in the last decade. We don't want to uh, let that get away by our snowballing ballooning debt. Now, the other day, the NDP government of Alberta simply passed an order in council. That is, they just sort of made an executive order to borrow, what it was it, up to $5 billion more, if my memory serves Six correctly? $6 billion. Dollars. How many billion? Six billion. Six billion. They just sort of passed a, an order in private, so they didn't have a public debate. They didn't bring in a budget. They just sort of agreed amongst themselves to tack on six billion dollars or give themselves the power to borrow six billion more. I have a theory, Paige, that they don't want to bring in a new budget and actually go through a debate and have on camera themselves arguing for a six billion dollar uh, uh, deficit because they're actually serving the interests of the federal NDP and Thomas Mulcair. And if Alberta showed that the NDP are just reckless socialist uh, debt mongers, that would redound to the discredit of Thomas Mulcair. I truly believe that, that uh, Rachel Notley, whose government is run by 10 out of 12 of the chiefs of staff for this Alberta government, aren't, aren't Albertans. They're Brian Topp, the federal NDP activist. They're, they're a, a bunch of, I mean, the, the finance minister's chief of staff in Alberta. He's a Toronto Olivia Chow worker. So I believe that by not bringing in a budget and by doing this borrowing uh, in private, they're actually using Alberta to help strengthen Thomas Mulcair's election hand. That's why they're not having a budget. What do you make of my theory? Is it a conspiracy theory or does it ring true? 
Well, you know, it's far be it for me to uh, try and guess the political strategy of any political party, but I will say that it is concerning that we just don't really have a true picture of the, the province's finances un at this point. And I think what really concerns me about that is, you know, I think Albertans have given uh, the NDP government the time to do their due diligence with our finances, given them the time to create this budget. You know, I, as you mentioned, it's going to come out sometime in the fall and we don't really have a clear idea of when. But the problem is when you increase your debt room by six billion dollars as they have recently um, in an order of council as you say we don't have an idea of how that debt is going to be paid off because there's no debt repayment plan. We don't have a clear idea of how that money is even going to be spent if they do indeed increase the debt and they do borrow on that. I mean, it really is a continuation of the PC tax uh, and borrow plan, the sort of let's increase our debt now and ask questions later strategy. Mm -hmm. But it's concerning because, you know, while we've given um, the NDP government this time, we haven't heard a peep about spending reduction, about a debt repayment payment or debt reduction, about deficit reduction, we haven't heard any of that other than increasing debt room, increasing spending, and increasing taxes, and those are all not good things for Alberta taxpayers. So far be it for me, like I say, to guess the political strategy, mm. but right now, uh, while we don't have a lot of details, what we can see is showing uh, that it's sort of an irresponsible financial picture right now. You're right. In fact, I regret asking that political question. You're a taxpayer's advocate. You're a nonpartisan. But what we can all agree on is that the NDP hiked the carbon tax, announced a review of the royalty taxes, said they're going to raise uh, personal income taxes on anyone making 125 grand or more, which is the entire oil patch, and has already announced they're going to jack up corporate taxes by 20%. You don't need to ha be a conspiracy theorist to, say, to see that they're coming for the most entrepreneurial province. They're looking to take it down a peg. Paige, I hope we keep in touch. You're one of the few voices calling out stop to a government that's a railway train that's out of control. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.